What's up, everybody? Welcome to Smokestack Joe's Barbecue. I'm Joe, and today we're going to be doing a little non-traditional barbecue item. Being from New England, there's not a lot of barbecue out here, but we do love our lobster rolls, clam chowder, and fish and chips. So today I'm going to be doing my barbecue spin on some delicious fish and chips. So stick around. All right, so first things first, we're going with some delicious cod tenderloins. Cod and fish and chips go hand in hand. You can really use any kind of white fish you want, but cod is the way to go. Pick this up from my local market, wild caught fresh cod tenderloins. I like to take this skin off left over. You don't have to, my preference. So once these are trimmed up, just give them a rinse. Then just pat them dry. We got our two beautiful cod tenderloins. I'm gonna take these, throw them on the smoker, and let them get some smoke flavor. I'm not trying to cook them all the way through. I just want these to get some nice smoke flavor. I'm gonna pull them off, let them cool, then we're gonna dredge them and deep fry them. So, let's get these on the smoker. All right, got this thing smoking away. Let's get these tenderloins on. All right, we got the cod on the smoker. This is not gonna take long. It's probably gonna be on there 15, 20 minutes. I don't want it to be getting cooked that much. Obviously it's gonna cook a little bit, but I'm just looking for some of that smoke flavor on there because later when we deep fry it, that's when we're gonna cook it. So while we wait, let's make some tartar sauce. So we start off with Greek yogurt, whole milk. Don't be getting none of that low fat shit. Next, Worcestershire sauce. Lemon. Fresh chopped dill. This is previously chopped that I had frozen. That'll work too. If you don't have fresh, go for some dry dill. Salt. Pepper. One last ingredient. Pickles. Kosher dill. You're just going to want to dice these up. Then mix. 
you are going to have yourself some of the most delicious tartar sauce. I'm telling you, don't buy the bottled stuff. Make it yourself. It'll be so much better. Let's give it a try. Oh my god. So good. I'm telling you guys. Do this. Let's check on that fish. All right, this fish is looking good. Like I said, I don't want it to get too cooked right now. So let's, let's take it off. All right, so I'm thinking this may not work. This fish is starting to fall apart on me. I don't know if I'm going to even be able to dredge it. What I'm going to do now is wrap these up in tin foil, throw them in my fridge to get them to try and tighten up a little bit where I'll be able to dredge and deep fry, hopefully. So let's see what happens. All right, so... Well, that fish hopefully firms up. Still a little concerned. We'll see what happens. Let's make some chips or fries, however you want to say it. So, got some nice big potatoes here. Dice these up into planks. These are going to be some nice chips. We're going to be doing a double fry on these. That is the best way to cook thick wedge fries like this. So we're going to give them one fry at about 350. Pull them out. Let them rest for a little bit. Crank up our heat to around 375 and give them another fry to get them nice and crispy. That way they'll have that nice crispy exterior, but they'll still be nice and soft in the middle. I'm telling you, the best way to do it. Got these chopped up. Throw them on a tray. All right, let's get these chips going. So, in this cast iron pot, I got a mix of avocado oil and beef tallow. So you can use canola oil, peanut oil, whatever you feel like doing. I'm not a fan of those processed seed oils, so I'm going with avocado and tallow. I know avocado oil is expensive. Tallow is hard to come by. You can also use lard, but this beef tallow is going to be delicious with these fries. Let's get going. Don't want to overcrowd the pan. Want to give it all some room. That should be good for now. Just move them around, make sure they're not sticking. You could smell how this tallow is. It's absolutely amazing. Freaking ridiculous. Now we're not looking for golden brown. We just want to get these a nice first fry, soften them up a little bit. Because we're going to take them off, let them cool, bump this oil up, and fry them again. Jeez. Spilled my beer. All over my thermometer. Fuck. Bitch. It's all foamy now. Nothing worse than a foamy beer. See, this is kind of what we're looking for here. Starting to bubble up. Not brown though. So, I think we're about done on these ones. Now get yourself a nice pan with a rack. 
this is if you don't have something like this, highly recommend getting it. This is awesome for so many different things. I think our oil's cooling down a little bit here. This is what you're looking for. It's just starting to cook soft, not crispy yet, but up hot, hot. So that's what you're looking for. We got the first round of frying done on these chips. Let's take a look at them. Yeah, this is what you're looking for. Just starting to go a little bit, nice and soft. So we'll let these sit while this oil gets really hot. And then we're gonna put these in again and finish them off nice and crispy. All right, we got the oil up to temp, screaming hot. Let's throw these fries back in there. Our goal here is super crispy. Already starting to look pretty good here. Looking for that nice golden brown color. Getting there. All right, these look about done. Let's get them off here. Put that oil heat back up a little bit. Get some more on. Best time to season these is as soon as they come out of the oil. All right, these chips are done. Pull them off. Look at that. Oh, yeah. That's what we're looking for, man. Like I said before, this beef tallow is going to add a ridiculous flavor to these delicious fries chips whatever there we go just gonna salt these up ready to rock keep these warm while we get the fish done which I'm super excited to see how this works out I'm really hoping the fish is gonna be solid enough to fry so let's go all right so for the fish we're gonna need two things we're gonna need dry seasoning and then we're gonna need our batter so the problem I have, I don't have flour. Don't ask me. Don't know how it happened, but I don't have flour. So I'm gonna make do with what I have. Keep in mind, you should be using flour. So start with the dry. This is where you would add flour. So I don't have flour. What I have is yellow cornmeal. So see how this does. It's definitely not like flour. Now to that, I add powdered jalapeno pepper, which is very good in place of cayenne. You're gonna want some dried dill, some Chesapeake Bay seasoning. You can get Old Bay, whatever you have. It's all very similar. All right, then we'll mix this up. Move on to the wet. So. I have this leftover tempura batter, so I think this will make a good replacement for flour. To that, add a little cornstarch. Chesapeake Bay. Stuff adds great flavor to seafood. It's got some good celery notes in there. For wet, beer. The beer aerates pretty good for the batter. Makes it nice and airy. I need a little more. I like to add some pickle juice. It's 
still a little thick. Really didn't want to use all my beer. This looks about right to me. All right. So that is ready for the fish. All right. Here's our fish. Moment of truth. I threw these in the freezer for a while. Try and get them to firm up. We'll see. Ooh, you know what? It's super tender, but this may work. As you can see, this one is falling apart here. I want to cut these into chunks anyway, so probably cut this one. Let's look at how this one is. Okay. Okay. Let's cut this one. This one's falling apart a little. Yep, see? Lost a chunk here. This one. Lost some chunks. Some more chunk here. Alright, so this one I'm going to do with this one. That's a good chunk there. Chunk this one here. This is going to be a bunch of chunks. A fried fish. So, let's do this then, huh? All right, so we got a dry batter fish, then we're gonna fry it. So, throw it in, cover with that cornmeal. Not bad, huh? Then right in the batter. Cover it up nice. And we're good to go. All right, let's get this into the deep fryer. Here goes nothing. Oh, got a good feeling about this. We're gonna have a little, a bunch of these little bitty crispy bites, but you know what? They're gonna be pretty damn good. No one in New England's gonna have fish and chips like this. This is a game changer, I'm telling you. I'd like to get all these in, but I think we're gonna have to do a couple batches here, so let's make sure we don't want these sticking. Oh yeah. Alright, let's try and flip these over now. Get some room here. Oh my. Oh good lord. Good lordy lord. Look at there. Oh my. De oh, yep. It's gonna be fantastic. It's going to be Fantasia. Look at the color, guys. I'm blown away. This is working pretty good, honestly. That's what we're looking for. I don't know why I just brought my Irish accent out. So I'm gonna pull these small chunks out. These are gonna be my taste testers. Just a delicious. Look at the color on this. I don't know why I was so worried about them falling apart. Because they are looking good. I'm calling this done. Again with the rack, great. Let the oil drain, all right? Don't have a rack, get a rack. Oh my God. You don't understand, people. Smoked fish and chips. What the F are we doing? All right, guys, the fish and chips are finished. This worked out great. Definitely a lot of work, but 
Let's just dig in and see how it is, huh? Got our nice tartar sauce. I, this fry, this fry is just asking for it. Mmm, yep. The tallow adds a significant flavor to these. And this tartar sauce is fantastic. Now, here we go. Is smoking it worth it? Let's find out. My answer is if it's worth it, yeesh. You have to do this. I know it's a lot of work, but this is an incredible flavor. Fish and chips, it's crispy, but it's got that just different taste. It's the smoke. It's This is so worth it. It's incredible. Now, yeah, got to try it with this tartar sauce first too, right? I'm so happy with how this came out. This is so worth it, guys. The smoky flavor on here. Deep frying in the tallow didn't hurt. All right, so this was a complete success. It's a little iffy because after you cook it on a smoker, it's kind of falling apart. Throw it in the freezer. Let it firm up. It'll be all right. This flavor is incredible. The smoke flavor, because it's not just, a, it's like a roasted smoky flavor. But man, guys, give this a shot. You will not be disappointed. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'm going to have a ton of other good videos like this. Check me out on Instagram, Smokestack Joe's. Always posting great photos and stuff on there. Give this a try, guys. You will not regret it. Till next time, Smokestack Joe's.